style, pace, an abundance of weaponry, and a chainsaw boot. This is Turbo Overkill. If you have never heard of this game, or if you're just looking for a little bit more information on the matter, then look no further. Turbo Overkill is a wild ride, and quite frankly, I have a lot to say about it. So strap yourself in, as it's about to get a little bit messy. Turbo Overkill harks back to the old school style of FPS shooter. It lets its fast paced action, heavy hitting weaponry do the talking rather than focusing on narrative. That being said, there is a story to be told here. Set in a cyberpunk like world, you play as Johnny Turbo, a badass hired to clean up the city of paradise under the control of a rogue AI known as Sin. Now this AI is bad news not only for paradise, but for the whole world, as its main aim is to spread its cult of flesh and machine everywhere it can touch. And Johnny Turbo, accompanied by his AI Sam, a whole arsenal of weaponry, a flying car, and of course, his trusty chainsaw leg, is the world's best bet stopping that from happening. The story isn't groundbreaking and nor is it trying to be, but the voice acting is superb and the overall art style really lends itself to fleshing out some of the exposition and allows you to feel invested regardless. Sending you the coordinates now. Without the way, let's move over to the gameplay loop, because as I mentioned before, that is the main focus of this genre. Like any good boomer shooter, you start with only the basics, in this case, it's your dual pistols. The game does a fantastic job though of slowly introducing the player to new mechanics and weaponry as they progress through the missions. To give you an example of this, it teaches you about the primary and secondary fire modes with the most basic of weapons against some weaker enemy types. Yeah, you can spam the pistols like any other semi-auto weapon, or you can absolutely kick some ass with a secondary fire mode, which turns one of them into a charged up lock-on weapon like the smart pistol from Titanfall. And you guys know how much I love that thing from Titanfall. And trust me when I say this, you'll be using this for pretty much the entire game, in combination with the rest of the weaponry you get to blow the enemies away with. Slowly but surely, you'll make your way through the levels, picking up and being introduced to new abilities and weapons that do a great job at keeping each level and engagement fresh. Just as you feel there may be a little dip in this high-octane adventure, they will drop wall running boots on your lap or an upgrade to your chainsaw boot that allows you to regen a small amount of health with each kill you score with it. It really does pace these things well throughout and kept me hooked and thoroughly entertained. Speaking of the weaponry then, let's explore a few of the options we have here, shall we? We've already mentioned the lock-on pistols, but next up are the two shotguns you end up with. And boy, are these a bunch of fun to use again, as they should be in any fast-paced shooter like this one. The standard pump action is punchy and is great for crowd control, especially thanks to its own alternate fire mode that spits out an electro bomb of some sort that obliterates smaller enemies and can stun even the bigger ones. Combine this with the super shotty that can tear through anything up close and you have a combination spawned from the gods to deal justice to anyone dumb enough to get in your way. The one two combo is simply devastating. It does get a bonus point for giving the super shotty an alternate fire mode of a grenade launcher too. It's not the most useful, but in a pinch, it certainly comes in clutch. Up next then we have the two machine guns. Now the first one you get is a dual SMG, which are satisfying to use, but they're a little underwhelming later on with their lackluster power. It makes up for it somewhat with its assault rifle alternate fire mode, but even then it will slowly find itself at the bottom of the pile as you soon gain access to the chain gun. Yes, the chain gun also makes an appearance here too, with its high fire rate and damage output. This can choose through all but the largest of foes. The range is yet to be desired, but it certainly makes up for that with how fun it is to use, mowing down hordes of enemies like cutting grass on a Sunday morning. And if you ever to get bored of this, then its alternate fire mode will pick the heat back up with its fiery display. Who would have thought a chain gun slash flamethrower was something I was missing in my life, but yet it goes together like peanut butter and jelly. There are so many good choices of weaponry in this game, but it doesn't mean I don't have a few nitpicks here and there with its selection. First of all, there is a distinct lack of range with most of the weapons available. The two you will fall back on are the assault rifle variant, which as I mentioned before, just lacks a bit of power. 
which then leaves you reliant on the smart pistol to get those lock-on kills. This wouldn't usually be an issue in most retro shooters, but with turbo overkill's emphasis on verticality and scale, in some levels you do find yourself being picked off by enemies on top of other buildings a mile away, with no real way to respond. Granted, it's few and far between, but it's very noticeable when you find yourself in these scenarios. The other little annoyance is kind of the chainsaw leg in a way. And before you start booing and typing in some random comment about how I don't know what I'm talking about, I should go play a game like Barbie's Pony Paradise or something instead. Just hit me out for just a moment. I love the chainsaw leg in its core design. Don't get me wrong, it's very, very fun. It was a feature I again didn't think I wanted until I was shown it. And when it works, it works really well. But here is the sticking point. I can see what they wanted to do. And they just didn't quite pull it off. It's supposed to work similar to the chainsaw in Doom. It's more of a system to gain resources back rather than a direct attack option. However, the risk and reward is totally skewed. The amount of health and armor you get back for doing this successfully is minuscule at best. Like, not even worth a third of a single hit from most attacks. And if you miss or get stuck, then you are in big trouble. This game is punishing at times. Enemies hit really hard and can take you out in a matter of seconds if you let them. So at a certain point, you'll almost stop using the chainsaw for its intended use. I'm not sure how I would fix this, but maybe increasing the base penetration or damage or simply just increasing the amount of health you get back from when you use it would go a long way. But I'm not sure. I'm no game designer at all and these guys definitely know more than me. Okay, so let's touch on the enemies that you'll be facing then, just for a short moment. Yet again, the game does a great job at drip feeding the player new challenges and enemy types to deal with, all scaling alongside the weaponry the player picks up. You have your basic henchmen to deal with at first, with assault rifles and slow moving projectiles. The perfect candidates for those shotguns and pistols I talked about earlier. Then you will face the more interesting foes like the ones that jump around creating annoying electronic fields wherever they go, guys with the grenade launchers that explode when they die, and then you will come across what I like to call the mini bosses. I mean, not really because there are a shit ton of them, but still. From mechs to flying drones, lads with chainsaw arms, you name it, they're all here to ruin your day and it is great. Each brings something new for you to think about, and knowing what weapon to use at the right moment is part of the challenge that makes this game so addictive, especially in the harder difficulties. But what I think really ups the ante and kept me engaged was a mixture of the collectibles to be found and the upgrades to be unlocked and earned. On each level, there are set amounts of collectibles hidden across the area. These unlock gameplay modifiers that really change up the setting in many different ways. Ways I'm not going to spoil here because that's half the fun, right, in collecting. But rest assured, they are creatively hidden with some requiring some out-of-the-box thinking, jumping, and platforming to find. Don't be traveling paradise with that. Upgrade now. First off, what is a cyberpunk world without body modifications, eh? Nothing. That's what. And Turbo Overkill knows this all too well, implementing a mechanic that allows you to upgrade each of Johnny's limbs with small buffs to give you the edge in your fight against world domination. It's a fun little upgrade tree that expands as the game progresses. The main way you achieve this is the same way you obtain the alternate fire modes for your weapons. You kill enemies, they drop coins, you spend those coins at vending machines scattered across each mission. Each one is voiced expertly and comes with its own theme tune, which is a nice touch. It's things like this that really show the love and care that went into this project, and I'm all here for that stuff. The one sounds awfully familiar. Yet again, this is another example of how the game paces its content to the player, little by little, keeping the sense of progression and achievement ever present. But all of this would fall a little flat if it wasn't for the fantastic overall design the game leans on. Its graphics are the definition of modern retro. It takes huge inspiration from Quake and Doom, sure, but it wraps it in a beautiful cyberpunk aesthetic. The rain pours over neon signs as holograms flicker in the background, and I'm sure at some point we will grow tired of this aesthetic as more and more games adopt it, but today is not that day. Not only does it look fantastic, but it runs like an absolute dream. Yes, my hardware is on the higher end, but a constant 200 plus frames at 1440p maxed out is a delight to play and it is pivotal for this genre. Tie this in with an outstanding soundtrack as you tear through enemies and leap from building to building and the level of immersion this game can achieve really is impressive. So let's round this up then. 
Turbo Overkill is a surprise delight that keeps on giving throughout its runtime. The movement, the gunplay is crisp and satisfying. The loop of kill, upgrade, chainsaw is addictive and rewarding. It's graphically unique and pleasing on the eye and filled to the brim with passion, a love for retro shooters and an eye for detail. All of this adds up to an experience I have to recommend and I very much enjoyed my time with it. If you're looking for a game that's in this genre that's sadly getting more and more bloated, you need to put this one on your list. You won't be disappointed. But that's all I really have to say about Turbo Overkill really. If you watched this far, then firstly, I just want to say a massive thank you just to you. I'm not a huge channel or anything, so when you watch this far, it really means a lot and you show a lot of support. If you want to show a little bit more, then feel free to hit the like button and maybe even subscribe if you like. But until next time, guys, cheers.